Yeah. So talk about let's let's hit on let's talk about Bloomberg a little bit. And and there's a whole like that's the worst one, but there is a whole treasure trove of lines about this guy. Um we've got actually let's is one more from Ben Dixon. Let's let's play on that. And then at the same time, this is released. Uh, Gregory Meeks, the fourth member of the Congressional Black Caucus, endorsed him. He's getting a slew of mayors. Um, he's hiring talent across the board. Money is money. Um, but let's play one more from Benjamin Dixon, and I want you to talk about this dynamic of how Bloomberg's inserting himself into mm -hmm. the race. You've made some reference to the elements that led to where we are today. Could, could you go a little bit deeper and tell us from your perspective, how did we get here? What are the root causes of the well, crisis? That you can go back. I, I would say it probably all started back uh, when there was a lot of pressure on banks to make loans to everyone. Um, redlining, if you remember, was the term where banks took whole neighborhoods and said, uh, people in these neighborhoods are poor, they're not going to be able to pay off their mortgages, tell them well, your salesmen don't go into those areas. And then Congress got involved, as local elected officials as well, and said, oh, that's not fair, these people should be able to get credit. And once you started pushing in that direction, banks started making more and more loans where the credit of the person buying the house wasn't as good as you would like. Yeah, Here's the thing. That's our bloomy. That's our bloomy. <laughs> it's all there. Yeah, I mean, and there's there's so much, and we've lived in New York City. You know, the 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 show is based in New York City. I've been here for a decade. We can see what his zoning policy has done to New York in terms of creating these these immense amount of luxury developments that are vacant. Like thirty percent of them yep. are vacant, and homelessness is like at a crisis right now creating luxury development that all has also transformed like places like Williamsburg, um, just put gentrification on overdrive, cut out manufacturing in so many of, you know, the, the communities that were giving people jobs in the city. And he did not want it to be a manufacturing city anymore. No. No, so no, he, no. you know, had a lot of luxury, you know, just all these deals with real estate developers to put it on hyperspeed. So, I mean, there's so much wrong with his campaign it's almost like he's the flip side of donald trump uh, because he's a you know he's he's, he's i just want, no he's he's literally the flip side of donald trump yeah like i want to really hit that for people he yeah. is i mean that you are choosing between two paths of formalized authoritarianism in that race and people should not minimize that at all yeah i mean the sort of fascism that we talk about relating to donald trump bloomberg actually implemented in new york city <laughs> And so the only reason why people are discussing it less is because he's kind of offering patronage jobs to liberals. Yes. A lot of his support is coming from him going into these cities. And if you just look at almost every endorsement that I've seen thus far, if you go back four weeks, a month or two, you can see where he's gone to these cities and he's made some grand speech about we need to put more resources into these struggling towns and communities and giving some people jobs in exchange for their endorsement. Um, there's a, a young uh, congressional candidate right now out of Florida, Elijah Manley, who put on Twitter today or sometime, you know, over the last couple of days that Kalee, he was could offered. Could you guys look for that? It's Elijah Manley on Twitter. Sorry, he was offered, ahead. I think, $6,500 a month. And, is a, you know, he's like 20 years old. So that sounds amazing, $6,500 a month to be a senior advisor for the Bloomberg campaign. That's a lot of money that he's just kind of throwing out there it's, to some for someone we don't even you know know, but he just wants all these black faces. So to me, right. this is just kind of the the peak of the sort of cynical represent, representational politics. Instead of real kind of getting at justice work, getting at inequality, you just put kind of black faces in front of your campaign and you say, oh, well, I'm about black people. And some folks, you know, think that that is meaningful. Right. Right. This is uh, Elijah Manley. Um, I received a call from Bloomberg campaign last week offering me, yeah, like you say, 6500 a month with benefits for an advisory role. That's 100% more than I'm making now. My answer, of course, is no, I'm with Bernie Sanders. They're out here stealing people, y'all. And and by the way, uh, Chuck Rocha, and I believe completely he's an advisor for the Sanders campaign, he said on the Hill that he, he had a conversation with a local organizer who said, look, I can't turn down this offer. I'm still going to vote for Bernie, and I'm with you, but... Yeah, I got to pretend to take this job. And that's amazing, right? Because it makes total sense. Like you can 
he can play like he can play people who are good and want to get really good. And then he can also just exploit the total lack of infrastructure to support people doing work like Elijah Manley's doing. Right. And that's like the other like very specific hole on like the left, quote unquote. In terms of having like the resources to be yeah. able to yeah. influence things. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's what happens <laughs> under capitalism. And it's a right. cycle because people are, are struggling. They're suffering. You know, I have friends who want to do good, you know, law work, but they have to work for kind of these big law firms, A, to pay back their loans and to just be able to live in New York City. And so it just kind of repeats the cycle of supporting, you know, these these elite interests um, and these oligarchs who then can control kind of everybody else and <laughs> and politics. And that's that's a, a huge problem. But at the same time, I think when he actually gets out and has a debate and he has to confront his record, I always believe in kind of the power of the people. Mm -hmm. I feel mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. where we are right now, people are not going to let this kind of thing slide. He's had to answer to his campaign based on, you know, a podcaster. <laughs> finding some information on YouTube and, and putting it out there. And so I'm getting like press releases saying, oh, well, I, you know, from like the Bloomberg campaign, like I apologize for this work. So they have to, you know, address their their misgivings. And he tried to say he inherited it from Giuliani. Yeah. And of course the actual numbers are that he spiked it from Giuliani. Seven times. So this dude has a more racist specific area than Rudy Giuliani. But you're absolutely right. I mean, I, I do think that the information gets out there. It's going to be a major problem for him. And and let's play this uh, real quick. Or wait, this is uh, let's let's find the clip of the woman protesting him. Oh, this is it. OK, this is great. <laughs> and everybody should be doing this everywhere yeah. he goes, yeah. particularly if you're a little old lady like this. Cause yes. Uh, <laughs> yes. It's a Bernie bro. It's going to take less. <laughs> she is a Bernie bro. Bernie bro is a state of mind, Matt. <laughs> We've got some uh, interstitial. A deeper and tell us. <laughs> Are you listening to a motivational record in the background or something? All right. Yeah, let's play this real quick. This is important. This is exactly what Malik is talking about. I am that excited. Let's play it one more time. I love it. I am that excited. I love her. <laughs> trying to work. That is plutocracy. Yes. 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 Gives her a hug. <laughs> He's trying to lead her like she's like a cat or something. <laughs> What kind of stand do you need to be? You know, let me, this is, let me just say, this is me. I'm very cynical. But if you were in that crowd booing this old lady off of the stage for saying the obvious and doing so courageously, you better be on Bloomberg's books. Because if you're not, that's fucking pathetic. Why are Bloomberg voters so uncivil? Honestly, well, that's number one is that they're totally. I guess an old lady. Jeez. Ugh, ugh. <laughs> not a good look, guys. <laughs> if this is the hill you want to die in, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I love that she went up there with her little shopping bag. She was like, I'm she, like, she just came straight from the grocery store. It's like, oh, that mic's open. Yeah, right, mic's I'm open. <laughs> Let me just run up in this campaign real quick. I love it. Will you stay with us for a little bit of the post game? Sure. Fantastic. All right. We're going to talk more Bloomberg in the post game because we're going to just just omnibus all of these clips on Every single area. We didn't even play what this guy said about spying on Muslims. And let me and also I want to say here, I mean, this is this is a history. Like go back to a program like Bossy. I think that Bossy Bossy, which was essentially the NYPD unit that spied on people like Malcolm X, that in my editorial definitely had a hand in his assassination, as but one of innumerable examples. And realize that to the extent that those programs were even t slightly rolled back, Mike Bloomberg reamped them, created a mini CIA department, and literally spied on kids on a whitewater rafting trip. 
And when confronted with this was just like, hey, it's a dangerous world. So, you know, and that go, and then, you know, poor people should pay taxes. I don't support raising the minimum wage. I mean, there's no other way besides an oligarch of describing this person as other than an authoritarian Republican. I mean, I mean it really is like through the looking glass to be like, I, I actually, I can even understand the mentality of any trash Democrat is not Donald Trump, but this isn't any trash Democrat. <laughs> this is a fucking Republican. So we will talk about him more and it's very important. You know, we want to game these YouTube algorithms because look, he's got an un ending amount of money to spend and they do they have good analytics they know where to target it they know how to talk about it and if the work of benjamin dixon and others isn't highlighted the media will certainly give them a pass and we could have a real problem but malika before all of that how can people find your documentary you can go on youtube and google or not google but put it in the youtube search bar <laughs> left out <laughs> and it's on my my channel um so you guys have my name up there. So if you put in YouTube and Malika Jabali, it'll pop up. There'll be all the ways you can find. Now, are you going to be doing more uh, documentaries on that channel, or what's the plans for that? I have no idea. It was so much work, y'all. Like, <laughs> I believe. Is it, it was, true that no. that I'm sorry to interrupt? Mike Bloomberg yeah. is hosting a Left Out viewing with you. <laughs> <laughs> How do you think I pay for Mike? Yeah, he's just like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> sponsoring my existence right yeah, now. Yeah, he's just like, oh sure, Left Out sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> um, am, how, yeah, I can't. Every person has ever told me about making a documentary. It sounds like one of the most exhausting processes imaginable. It's a lot. I mean, and it's and there wasn't like a clear way to distribute this because uh, it's a short. So, you know, it's not like it's making money. It's just there for the people. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, but that cost. So I had to basically do. It was like a very steep learning curve. I had to learn how to edit. I was like, I don't know how to fucking edit. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> oh, you edited it? Like, do you, yes. you edit it yourself? I sound mixed. I was like, I don't. You That's know. incredible. I just came up with the idea. I was like, it's got to happen. Can I have the soundboard? I don't normally do this, but let me. Got it. Yeah. I want to recommend something. Um, and when you do this, it's extremely important that you be highly polite. But anytime you see a segment or you see somebody tweet or maybe you just know somebody's brand is built off of talking about what voters in the Midwest want or whatever else. Maybe it's Claire McCaskill. Maybe it's the guy who wrote Hillbilly Elegy or some other garbage. But don't say that. Just when you see them on social media, just tweet malika's doc at them and cc her on and say like hey i think you should check this out have you considered this? have you considered this perspective be extremely polite <laughs> tweet it at her and get the information in front of them and you know i've actually seen engagement work like that for some things especially because this is short so there's way yeah, less of an excuse yeah yeah you have seven <laughs> minutes in between making up a poll result in your head <laughs> to watch a mini doc so i'd recommend you do it Everybody should watch this. You just watched a Michael Brooks show video. Subscribe to get them all. Why wouldn't you? Don't be foolish. Click subscribe below and become a patron as well. Patreon.com slash TMBS. Thanks, everybody.